I'm working on this synthesizer for quite a while and went from a very simple prototype to this. And then to this. In this video I will show you the latest version of it. First, let's talk about the architecture, which was completely reworked. In earlier versions, the user interface was independent from the rest of the code, which means the synthesizer couldn't run without it and any change in code resulted in changes of the user interface. This is a simple sketch of the new architecture. The actual synthesizer and the user interface are split and now communicate over a third component. This component is called data interface and has only the purpose to receive all input data from the user interface. Input data can be all kinds of slider values and whether the touchpad was pressed or not. The synthesizer reads this data when needed. An advantage of this solution is the changes in the synthesizer don't affect the user interface. The user interface can be even replaced with a completely different one, which uses for example the library PyQt. It's even possible to use hardware like potentiometers. Until now I could only control the synthesizer with the touchpad. By the way, the touchpad also received an update, which now allows me to switch to different parameters for the x-axis and the y-axis. For example, I can switch from pitch cutoff to pitch rate, which let me control the frequency and the rate of an LFO. Additional to the touchpad, I can now control the synthesizer with an external MIDI keyboard. What does MIDI actually do? Basically, it's a standard how to communicate with other devices so that they, for example, know which nodes are played right now and which don't. There are tables with all nodes and frequencies which you can find on the internet. Each node has a specific number and there is a formula to calculate the actual frequency based on the number of the node. To communicate with a MIDI device like my Arturia Minilab MK2, I'm using the library RT MIDI. It establishes a connection with the device and receives all the notes which are played as numbers. To render a sound with my synthesizer, I only need the frequency, and this frequency will be calculated with a given formula. I've mentioned LFO before. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator and it's a new feature on the latest prototype. It is a waveform with a very low frequency until 20 Hz and is not used to create a sound. Instead, it's applied on existing waveforms or existing audio. There are a few possible ways how this is done. One is to use it to stretch or compress the waveform multiple times. This will result in higher and lower frequencies and is also called frequency modulation. You can imagine it like if you would stretch or compress multiple parts of a spring. Each waveform behaves slightly different in terms of frequency modulation. A triangle waveform will result in a vibrato effect often used for stringed instruments like a violin. The sawtooth waveform will produce an effect like an alarm siren and the square waveform will sound like the ringing of a phone. A different way to use LFOs is to let them control a low pass filter. As a quick reminder, the low pass filter filters out all higher frequencies of a signal. In my case, it's named cutoff filter. This way, there won't be created higher and lower frequencies Instead, higher and lower frequencies will be filtered out because the LFO is changing the filter frequency constantly. If the triangle waveform is used as LFO, this will result in a typical wobble sound or wobble bass, which is often used in dubstep music. The square waveform sounds more like the monotonous voice of a robot and the sawtooth sounds similar but has an additional echo effect. 
I'll give you a brief overview about my bug documentation. This is something I started doing because the amount of bugs and the complexity of them are growing with the project. If I wouldn't do this, I would just forgot about them. It's also some kind of motivation because I can have a quick overview of the progress and what's left to do. Here is how I'm doing it. I write the keyword and then a little description about the bug when it was noticed and if it's fixed or not. Bugs which aren't critical tend to be untouched for a longer time. Usually I always fix the critical bugs first. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.